international speaker. She makes her home now in Colorado with her fiance and dog. She travels the world photographing, teaching, and sharing her insights so she can help make our planet a better, more loving place. When not taking photos, she loves any excuse to be outside, like hiking, camping, climbing, and diving. She joined Nikon's Elite Ambassador Program in May of 2018. Her work is driven by a passion to help people connect emotionally to wildlife and the natural world. Her accolades include over 60 international photography awards, including two Nature's Best Photography Awards. Her recent work has been exhibited twice at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History and tonight's judge, Christy Odom. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Uh, we've got some beautiful work and I'm, I'm honored to be able to see it and to judge it and all that good stuff. I will say as a judge, I do comment a little more critically because competitions are an amazing opportunity to learn and grow. And so I'm a little bit more specific sometimes with competitions. Uh, I hope that's all right, but hopefully, you know, you guys realize it's just my opinion. <laughs> Everybody has their own opinion. Um, and so it might be helpful for you. It might not, but, but take any advice that you can. And, and if it doesn't work for you, no, no hard feelings anyway. I'm just excited to be here and see all your beautiful work. Great. Um, I did want to do a quick plug if that's all right. Sure. Um, yes, please. I was really blown away by so much work and just this week, Nikon opened up their photography competition, which is open to any photographer, any camera brand, anything. It's also open to filmmakers. And it's an amazing competition with crazy prizes. And I was going to see if, if Samantha could share that screen with you guys. Yeah. Um, I encourage you guys to, whoa, look at her email. Can you, can you see it? I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so here is uh, the, the, the photo contest here. And if you look at all the, um, the prizes on the entry page, I definitely think that some of you guys have amazing chances in this. Look at all the cameras they're giving away. It's quite crazy. So um, let's go back to that front page. And so people can see the web address. Yep. Okay. So you guys have a look, enter the competition. You got beautiful work and it's great to get it even out there more. So thank you, Sam, for sharing that. I appreciate that. Without further ado, we're gonna to get to the competition. Okay. Oh, I've lost my pen. I need my pen before we start. Okay. <laughs> oh, what I'm gonna do is bring up Lightroom and then uh, we're gonna start with the novice category. And Cheryl, if you could chime in with the um, amount of prizes per one. So there's uh, 12 in the, are we doing the color? Yes. First, novice okay, so, yeah, color, novice, there's 12 entries. So we get a first, second and third place with this one. Okay. Okay, so I just get started here. Are we good to go? Yep, can you see? I can, we're starting with image number nine. Is that oh, that's right? nine, why did it do that? No, that's fine, I mean. Well, I tried to put them in order, but I guess they um, decided not to be in order. Uh, sort by name, maybe. I did. I thought I did. Where's my sort thing? It's like gone. Everything's gone. <laughs> um, here we go. Was Cheryl, I would love for you at the very start of this to go ahead and just read off the description of the competition, the minimalistic, oh. so that we can just. Oh, I don't have that. that at the beginning. I do. Oh, just, John just, has it. John usually John has, has it. Okay. Yeah, so give me just a moment here because I got to get out of full screen mode. Help me set the scene, John, what yep. we're looking for in the competition tonight. That I can do. So tonight uh, for, you know, the topic was negative space slash minimalist. So it's a form of photography distinguished by extreme austere simplicity. It emphasizes spareness and focuses solely on the smallest number of objects in the composition process. That was the summary of the description that we put together. Great. Okay. okay, with that, let's get started. All right. This is, I love the use of green and the simplicity of color being a color category. Um, I like that the green is such a, a prominent, strong, bold color in such a misty, you know, environment. I would say that there are a few distractions in the image that takes away um, some of the dead grass in the foreground, as well as 
uh, some of the plant life that doesn't seem to add to the narrative as much, maybe a, a tighter crop with just that stone and then the, the mist in the background would have been a little bit stronger. Um, but beautiful job with simplistic and green. Let's go to the next image. So this is kind of, is this okay? Good pace? Is that what you're looking Perfect. for? Perfect. Okay, great. Great. Uh, great simplicity here too, the cross. And I like how the cross is just a little bit off, a um, little bit to the left on that, that third line. Love the green in the foreground and the blue, the simplicity of the color. Uh, I would say the time of day may not add to the image. It's got such harsh light that really adds a lot of contrast to that grass, which my eye keeps staying in the grass. And I would have liked my eye to have like moved throughout the image a little bit better. So maybe revisiting this at a different time of day, day would be even stronger, but great job. I love the little bird that's sitting on top of the, the cross as well. Good little nugget there. Next image, please. What a great image for this time of year. It's so festive and the colors just bring us so much joy. Um, would say with images, I'm kind of looking to see if all elements do fit into the image. And the hand there is such a big part of the frame, but it's kind of distorted. So it takes away a little bit from the simplicity of the ball and the reflection. Um, I would have liked to have seen more of the hand, maybe not that skin part that um, looks a little bit, I don't know what the word is. Um, it looks different, which I don't think it really adds, but I love the color and I love the feel and I love the, the festivity of this image. Next one, please. I am going to ask everybody to mute their, um, uh, mute their, yes, if everybody can mute themselves that way. I don't get distracted by noises because I do get distracted. That would be lovely. And if not, Sam, could you just mute all and then I'll unmute myself? Yeah, I'm trying. Hold on. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> um, this is great too. I love the simplicity of the fact that the, the photographer used um, different techniques to kind of isolate the foreground, um, isolate something that's simple, something that's small and something that's kind of chaotic. Uh, I will say that some of the editing is seen here and I like my edits to be felt and not seen. If you look around the light pole, you can see how the focus just drops in and out, like the, the blurring was done in post. Um, so a little bit of refinement in that would have elevated this image even more. And you can see that as well in the very top of the image. But good job with your edit of color and, and great feel to the image. Next image, please. I really enjoy that this took the simplicity and, and really, uh, you know, like you can see so much depth to this. You can see so many layers to that blue and the, and the yellow, and you can feel that texture, which I think is nice. I think this is a great image for a minimalistic and simplistic um, competition. Uh, I do really enjoy the use of negative space as well as the crop. The crop really complements the shape of that dome. Um, this looks very much like the top of Jefferson or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. One little thing that would have improved it is a little bit of a tighter crop on the bottom, seeing just a little bit of that line pulls my eye a little too much. Yes, right there. I would have liked that line to have been cropped out a little bit more. Uh, but I really like how the tones have been used here. I like the texture and how the texture changes and, and great lighting on this. Next image, please. This is hot. <laughs> okay, so I like bad jokes. I apologize. <laughs> but I really love the simplicity of color here. Gosh, the, the red pops, the use of negative space, uh, things like that really work well for this category. Also, great job with the, the positioning of the peppers and the knife and how it kind of points together and it, it points you into the frame. And then the negative space balances from the left to the right, uh, which I think is done really, really well. I will say I would have liked the peppers to have been moved just a little bit to the left. The crop on the side of that pepper stem is distracting to me and my eye keeps going there. I would have liked to have seen that full stem uh, would have made the image even stronger, but great job. Next image, please. This is really, gosh, there's so many things to this that, that make this stand out. And one of the things that I really love is I, I love the eye movement. I'm really big on, on watching how my eye through, moves through the frame. 
And I love that this landscape, like my eye goes on those, the beautiful dome and it points in towards that tree. Uh, I also love that this landscape has the sense of a foreground, a midground, and a background. Like I like that it's got, you know, the element of the tree and the close to us, and then the element of the textures of the, I don't know if it's snow or sand, I can't really tell, but it's beautiful, as well as the texture to the sky in the background. Um, it's all done really, really well. I might have possibly played with my crop. Sometimes we could we don't have to stick to the normal dimensions of crops. And I might have wanted to just see just a little bit cropped off the bottom. There's so much of that white space that when I hold up a sheet of paper and crop just a little bit more, in my opinion, I think it would be a little bit stronger, but great job with tones and great job with simplicity. Next image, please. Okay. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy about this image is just the play of the cool and the warm colors. Like I really love that amber to blue and I, I like the reflection and I like that there's blue balancing on the top and the bottom. I think that's done really, really well. And I like how the geese is going into the frame from the right and the negative space on the left, which this being a category that really pushes negative space. The negative space is used really nicely for um, eye movement and, and having the fact that the subject is the head's position that way pulls my eye to that negative space and pulls my eye back to the geese, which I really, really enjoy. Um, I also like the break in the pattern behind the, the, the goose uh, <laughs> with the blue and, and, and how that those streaks come in. Um, that being said, I might possibly play around just a little bit more with the crop, a little bit off the bottom, a little bit off the right to, to put that, um, the, the goose in the third, as opposed to just a little bit off center might've increased it a little bit. So I would have tried to put the goose on the bottom third, as well as on the side third. Um, so I would have cropped a little bit off the right hand side in the bottom. Um, but really nice, really nice, really nice image here. Next image, please. This image is really unusual and I love unusual images. I love when I see something completely different that something that I may not have seen before. And there's so much simplicity to this color. Like this image in a way, it's really only got, like it's, it's kind of monochromatic with just red in there and, and green. And I think that that's really nice. And I, I, I love that there's a little bit of red up at the top of the horizon that balances with the red tulips at the bottom. Um, you know, I think I've seen this structure possibly photographed before, but from a different angle. And I really appreciate that the photographer is stepped back to show the beautiful flowers and their pers unique perspective, um, as well as like something that's a little bit more abstract that gives me a, uh, it gives me a bit of a different way of seeing. I think that that's, that's done really, really well. Um, one thing that would have improved the image is just a little bit more tonality to the sky. The sky being so bright, it pulls my eye a little too much. Um, maybe with the use of filters or something like that, getting the sky to be just a little bit on the darker side uh, would have balanced it a little bit even more, but great job using reds and great job with your balance on this image. Next image, please. I love the simplicity in this. I love the use of negative space, the textures that come out. I wonder, you know, gosh, it, it's so bizarre to see this flower just kind of blooming there. I'm not sure if it was planted or if, I'm assuming it was there, which is really cool, but it's also not just the flower, but the shadow caused by the flower and that shadow pointing into the negative space. Like somebody has really pushed this category and shown us something really unique and different, which I think is, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, when looking at this image, one of the things that I was like, you know, maybe the light's a little harsh on the flower, but at the same time that harsh light's what caused that beautiful shadow. Um, and so the shadows on the inside, you kind of have to have that unless you're going to like really pull that in post or something like that to have that amazing shadow on the, um, on the sand, which I think is just lovely. Um, I think it's a beautiful, you know, really played with pulling it all the way to the left, but it balances with the negative space and really enjoy that balance. And um, yeah, great job showing us something completely, completely unique here. Next image, please. This image, um, I really enjoy the placement of the building and I really enjoy even how the clouds are kind of 
bringing us in and, and, and framing, almost framing the building, which I think is, is really nice. And you know what I think is really cool too, is that the shape of the clouds is very similar to the shapes on the building if you rotate it 90 degrees. And I like seeing repetition of shapes and images. I think that that's always really, really nice. Um, as a competition judge, I, I do like seeing sharp images and I do find this image to be a little bit soft. Um, maybe it's the, you know, shooting at 1.7 um, caused it to be a little bit soft. Um, so maybe increase that aperture a little bit unless you're absolutely sure you've nailed it. Um, or it could just be submission of the wrong file size or something like that that may have caused it to be a little bit on the blurry side. Um, but a great job using that sky and the repetition of the shape and the sky and the building and, and, and nice job balancing those elements. Next image, please. And this is, once again, you guys really know how to use your negative space, like the, the, the bird flying into that space and leaving that space on the left hand side um, to balance with the, the direction of how the bird's flying in. This is great lighting on it. I love how the wings are illuminated and how you can even see that fish and you can see the little water droplets coming off the fish from the grab. Um, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. A um, couple of things that distract my eyes a little bit are those really bright greens in the background. Yes, right there. And then the one on the left, if those were there, I think my eye would go a little bit more towards the bird and stay in the image a little bit better. Um, but beautiful job with negative space and beautiful job with the lighting there. Okay. So. First, second, and third. The first place is going to be the flower with the shadow. Okay. okay. Sorry, I've written description of all my places. I hope that's or all my that's first. Fine. You're fine. Um, second place is going to be the red tulip field. Um, in third place, I like the the reflective goose shot. <laughs> Excellent. And Cheryl, do you want to? Um, say who it was and have if they're online they can say something about it yes so the so you said that was um so this is third place right third yep. place is swimming alone and i have la duca okay yeah you know, i just had to unmute my uh my thing so um what was your question or what oh you can if you want to say something about your image yeah it's just uh lake fairfax and there were a number of uh, geese swimming and i just tried to zero in on this particular one who was trailing the rest of them and uh i just liked the, the wave action which was to me made it special that's nice and second place is the tulips and that's by masood Oh, excellent. Yeah, I'm surprised. This is the first time I'm participating. Uh, Good job. Uh, tulips, these are near Seattle. Uh, I went there uh, during the spring, and there's around one hour, one and a half hour drive from Seattle further east with my wife. And it was a cloudy day. And we just took some photographs. And I have a lot of photographs. So I really, I, I like this photograph because of that. Uh, building and the tree on the side. So that was the reason I put it in as yeah. uh, part of my competition. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Good right. job. Good job. Uh, first place is Flower in the Sand by uh, Wicks or Wikes. Wikes. So that is, uh, a, it was natural. It was planted there or it was growing there. That's at the Great Sand Dunes in Colorado. Oh, wow. Before, uh, before all the big dunes. I was not able to climb the dunes as other people did in our party, but yeah. Well, <laughs> next time. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Good job. Good job. Beautiful images. One of the things that I'm always looking for is impact and originality. And I love that. Um, I love how, how much originality there were in those images. So thank you guys for sharing. Very nice. Next category is monochrome novice, and there are nine images. And again, it's first, second, and third. Oh, there's first, second, and third for this category? Okay. Yes. All right. 
what a beautiful subject to pick for monochrome, like having, you know, monochrome is such a great tool to bring out textures and the, the textures that have been brought out in the dandelion um, are absolutely beautiful. Uh, I would have liked the monochrome to have been pushed a little bit more. So I find that a lot of these are center grays. I would have liked to have seen a lot more in the darker realm and the lighter realm as opposed to kind of in the middle to make it a little more punchy, um, as well as, you know, possibly a, a vignette around the side to, to darken the edges to bring your eye in a little bit more. But beautiful job for picking a great monochrome subject. Next image, please. This image is, it's such a fun play on shapes. It's so, it's so unique in the fact that like, even when you step back, it's, it's like you almost lose what the subject is, which I kind of like that. And I kind of like the, there's these great lines and there's these, you know, I guess this is a flamingo or something. Um, and usually people want to emphasize the color, but I really like the lighting and the monochrome and the reflection and the abstraction of it, I think is beautiful. Um, once again, though, as a competition judge, I really like sharp images and I find this image to be just on a touch on the soft side and um, it would have elevated this image quite a bit for me if it was in focus, but beautiful, beautiful job finding your subject and, and composing it properly. Next image, please. Very fun, simplistic image. Once again, great use of min um, negative space in the background. Um, and as opposed to the shot I was talking about at the first one, which I said it should have a vignette, I think the vignette's a little heavy on this one. I think you can see it just a little bit too much. Um, you can see kind of the, you know, the, the darkening around the edges and the blue that kind of comes in. So I would have liked that to have been a, a, a hair lighter. Um, but I really enjoy these unique tones, the blue to the yellow. I think it's really nice and really nice use of, 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 you know, just two colors in an image. Great job. Next image, please. This image, it, it really struck me because I did, I, I'm not quite sure what it is. And I like that, but I like that it's so textural. I like all the, all the patterns and I even like that there's like kind of this white dome in the middle of it. Um, it's, it's, it's very beautiful and it's very, um, yeah, I really like the graphic context of it. Um, I would have liked some of that brilliance to be in the, that black and white is treated so well in the middle, but it's kind of um, treated a little bit differently towards the edges. I would have liked a little more punch and I would have also liked to have maybe just a little more hint of what the context was to kind of figure out what's going on here. Um, but, but great job with your, your crop and your textural display of black and white. Next image, please. Um, very well hit this topic, the great lighting. I love how the lighting has brought out the, the textures on that beautiful triangle. Uh, and I love how the use of black and white really brings that out and brings out kind of the age and what's going on here. And I, I really like even the placement is nice with the black sky all around it. And the fact that the dome still has a lot of space, not the dome, the um, I'm just gonna call this the triangle. The triangle has a lot of space around it, which I think is really, really beautiful. Um, now I noticed when I downloaded this file and when I look at it here, there was just a little bit of inconsistencies in the, the blacks that are around. Um, one of the things that I do, especially when dealing with black and whites is I make sure I have a calibrated monitor. Um, and that way you can kind of see the different tones. Like the black is, is kind of blocked a little bit because I'm, I'm looking at this from a completely calibrated monitor. Um, so I use a Spader 3 system. I suggest if you get really into black and white editing to calibrate your monitor so you can see what I'm seeing and so you can make sure that your blocks are consistent. Um, but great job with the black and white category and great job with your minimal space here. Next image, please. Really fun play with black and white. And I like how the white really brings out what the photographer was looking at in this image. And it really helps me see the muscle tone and, and the textures to this horse. It gives me a different perspective. Uh, I will say I would like, I would have liked it to have been treated a little bit better. Um, some of the areas of the horse, the black blends in too much with the background, like around the neck and the head. Uh, so I would have liked just a little more light and a little more detail coming out on the horse, um, but great job using black and white to bring out texture and muscle structure. Next image, please. 
this is really fun too. The fact that like you're looking through a window and seeing just little hints of the holiday. And I, I like that there's little tiny bits of, of Christmas here, but also the use of the negative space with the left window. Um, being true to a monochromatic category, I would have liked to have seen less colors here. I see blue and greens and yellows and um, I'm a huge black and white nut and I'm kind of obsessed with pure black and white. So I would have liked to have seen it honor that. Um, but great job showing little hints. And also guys, whenever you're cropping your image, just make sure you pay attention to how you're cutting your image on the left and the bottom. The fact that one ornament's cut kind of just on the top third and the, the, the window on the left is, is, you know, it's almost symmetrical, but the top and the bottom, like, it, you know, you can see that there's a lot more space at the bottom. So whenever you're dealing with symmetry, try to line that symmetry up as much as humanly possible would be great. Um, but, but great job using minimal space as well as giving us a little hint of Christmas. Next image, please. Uh, what a perfect, beautiful tree. My gosh, I love, I want to be here. <laughs> um, once again, when playing with your black and whites though, try, one of the things that I always suggest when editing black and whites is to keep an eye on my, I always keep an eye on my histogram and in Lightroom, it'll show you your histograms. I don't know if you can hit that right arrow there, Samantha and just have a look just so people can see what I'm talking about. The right arrow up um, all the way on the right side. So just scroll right, 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 right. Um, over. On mute, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're oh, open, up, open up the side panel, I think. Oh, oh, oh. So the histogram here, do you guys see this? Oh, can you um, see it? It's my, sorry. Oh, I could see it wherever you were. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that histogram, the, the tones are kind of sticking in the middle. Um, a lot of times, like as long as you don't clip, which is where you get um, either your, your lines all the way on the left of the histogram or all the way on the right of the histogram, as long as you don't touch that left and right line, a lot of times like I push my images to have more in the dark tones and more in the light tones which is kind of hard for me to describe here. But if any of you guys are curious about that, Google my name in Adobe and there's four hours of me talking about how I edit black and whites. <laughs> um, and you guys are more than welcome to watch because histograms are so important for understanding your tones. But I find that a lot of times when the histograms are kind of heavy towards the center, like this one, the image to me feels a little muddy. Um, so a lot of times it's really nice to have a lot in the, uh, you know, have your histograms have not so clumped in the middle, uh, but don't ever clip them on the left or the right. <laughs> um, and if you're curious to get into more details, Google Adobe Christy Odom, and there'll be tons of information on that. Um, but I really like that you saw such beauty in this tree and in the simplicity. It's a, it's a great image. Next image, please. I really like the simplicity. Here, the tones that come out, um, the light is, you know, the great use of that, that white negative space. I would have liked a little bit more, um, more of those dark tones. Once again, this histogram is going to be very clumped in one area. Um, I would have really liked to have seen really rich blacks here or, um, you know, maybe a crop that gives us a little more information on the bottom. It feels like it's a little tight to me. Um, but I really, really enjoy the textural aspects as well as kind of the simplicity of this. And that's the theme of the category, simplistic, minimal, um, and, and lots of uh, negative space. And I think that the photographer's done this really well. So before I announce first, second, and third now, can we just pull up a thumbnail of the whole group? Sure. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to do... First is going to be the triangle dome, the triangle. Yeah. Um, second, we're going to do the flamingo. And then third, we'll do the textural one. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, Cheryl, do you want to tell us who did each? Yeah. So let's see, I have, uh, where are we starting off with? The third, the, uh, third, third place. Mm -hmm. Third place is Lonely Tree by Tammy Smith. This is a tree. <laughs> but it says. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is Tammy online? Are we, are we sure we're looking at the right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, not that's right. My, excuse me, that's my image, Hank Sloan. Oh, good. 
And, uh, <laughs> All right. Hey. That's, that's the putting green. Um, oh. That's half of a golf I hole. I'm marking the wrong one here. And I started out wanting to do color because it was late in the day and I saw the light hitting the individual grass blades. And then I, of course, got it home and it didn't look like what I wanted it to look like. So then I flipped it to black and white. And then I flipped the black and white. Ah. And I did put a visionette around the outside of it, dimming it down, trying to keep more focused in the middle. But that's what you saw, Christy, it wasn't punchy on the outside. Mm. Very cool. That was beautiful. I love the abstraction and the black and white nature of it. Yeah. And the second's the flamingo. Yeah. And that's uh, Ken Wilcox. Kenny, you online? Okay. Ken may be on mute. I'll just jump to the next one if Ken wants okay. to say something. And first place is the uh, Washington Monument top. And that's also Hank. Oh, excellent. So yeah, that was uh, a trip downtown and I uh, had in my mind a different image than what I got, um, as that always turns out. But I remembered from the details of the Washington Monument that there was this metal piece right on the very tip of the uh, Washington Monument. My idea was to take my long lens out and try to zoom in on that. But I didn't realize how small that little metal piece was <laughs> on the very top of the monument. So. You know, obviously, I backed off a little bit and and took the top of it. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. All right. So now we're going to go to intermediate color. Let me make sure I have these in there. I don't know why. I'm just going to sort all of these. Hold on a second. I don't know why these aren't cooperating with me. Okay. All right, Christy, you ready? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> I hope I'm not being too harsh on you guys. I'm trying to give positives and negatives to everyone. I hope that's all right. Um, but uh, this is what a great way to start this category. Beautiful graphic. I love the orange and the blue in the backgrounds, like to, to have strong oranges and to have strong blues like that, really hard to do, but it's done really, really well. Also the, the use of um, how the, the bird is going, looking into that negative space is really, really nice and how it's put together. Great job. Next image, please. Uh, once again, great use with the white and negative space. I love how the flowers kind of coming in from the right, uh, bringing our eye in. Um, I would have liked maybe a little change in the lighting. Um, the lighting seems to, I'm trying to think, it seems to like, I, it could punch those oranges in the middle even more if it was lit differently. Also the way that the shapes of the stems are kind of cut with the flower. Um, I would have liked to have seen the full shape there, um, but beautiful, simple image of, of just striking colors, the striking flower. Next image, please. I really enjoy this because I have no clue what it is. <laughs> I'm trying to, I was trying to piece this together before, but it was, it, it's really nice because it almost seems like, you know, it, it, it seems like it's something man-made and then it seems organic and then it seems man-made and, but it's got great graphic quality. I love the lines that lead in. I love the, the, the round lines and the harsh lines that are next to it. Um, and I think that it's, it's a really interesting, really interesting image. Um, I would have liked to have possibly had a little more of a hint to what it is, um, as well as like, there's like um, some browns on the left side that I find take away a little bit um on the the wood or or whatever that yeah right over that area um so i feel like that takes away from kind of the smoothness and the graphicness of 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 the black lines and then the white shape um but i really i really enjoy the abstraction here next image please 
it was what a beautiful heart and nature. Um, great use of, of these, you know, the red and the greens and the complementary colors and how that complementary, uh, those complementary colors make the image pop and give this vibrance and, and beauty to it. I also love the, the shape. Um, and I think this is just done really well. It's, it's like the lighting on the heart or the lighting on the flower, it's, it's done in a way that really makes that color pop even more. And it's, it's like, it's alive. I think it's, it's so beautiful how this is so simple, but yet there's a, I feel something and I, I feel, I, I have a feeling with the plant shot. And I think that that's done so well. And I also love the square crop and how that crop complements the image. Um, but yeah, well done. Next image, please. Great use of sky and space and the plane going into the negative space. And it's such a simple shape. Um, I would have possibly liked this to have gone a little more graphic um, or have a little bit more punch. I find that the, the planes kind of in this shadow that um, would have liked to either seen more detail or less, um, but, but great job with using your negative space and having such a, a simple object in the middle of it. Next image, please. Oh, I love this reflection and I love this moment. Like, you know, it's almost making a, a heart again. And, and I like the fact that you can see this, um, see the water react. And, you know, the, you caught that exact moment where the, the beak is touching the reflection and it finished that shape off, which I think is just so nice. Um, I know this is a color category and I should judge this on color, but I would have really liked to have seen this one in monochrome um, because I find that these colors don't really add to the image, but there's such a cool graphic quality that those textures might've been really cool with a punchy black and white. Um, that being said, also just some of the distractions in the water, um, which I guess you can't really do much about that, but I would have liked a little bit more I don't know, I th maybe warming the image up or something like that, but um, just kind of the consistent brown tone kind of, to me, it takes away from the mood. I would have liked to have seen something a little more punchy, um, but great job capturing that moment and, and, and great job with your textures and your action there. Next image. Oh goodness, this is really a, a, a cool way to invite us into the landscape, like, or invite us into the frame. Like, I feel like, um, you know, with the footsteps, my eye is traveling with those footsteps and walking throughout. I love the use of blue and orange. I like those little tiny bits of orange at the top. It really adds to the vibrance. Um, yeah, for this image, I would have liked to have just seen a little more, seen a little more of that footprint in the foreground. Um, I would have liked the lines to have lined up perfectly. It seems like at the top they're slanted down a little bit. So maybe if you change your, um, in editing, if you, if, if you distort the image a little bit, you get those lines to line up a little bit more in the, on, on the top. Um, but I really enjoy the eye movement and how my eye travels with these, these feet through the, through the image. Next image, please. I really, this image has me thinking about so many different narratives. I'm really curious to kind of know the, the story behind this, but I feel like it's like, uh, to me, it kind of feels like a, a broken heart or a person who's, who's been screwed in one way or another through their love life. <laughs> and I, I thought that was so cool that it's like such a simple image, but it's so graphic that red and the narrative that I got from it, it may not be the narrative that the photographer was looking to project, but it was nice that it gave me a story that I kind of felt through. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, I love the, the, the tones and the texture and that the, the use of color, that bright red on the black, it's so vibrant, but there's something so sad about this as well. And the fact that this piece of wood and a couple of screws has given me an emotion, I think is beautiful and it's shot well. And, and I, yeah, I don't really have too much negative to say about this. It's a great image. Next image. I love how the photographer chose to get really low here. Um, I, it looks like it was taken from ground level and, and that gives us this great perspective of the turtle where it's almost like the turtle's kind of even looking down to us, which is nice because usually we're photographing turtles from a higher vantage point. 
but I love that eye and I love how the photographers used a really shallow depth of field. Great use of lens choice to separate the turtle from the background and also bring out, you know, different textures. I thought that this was, um, this was lovely. Um, I would like, hmm, maybe just a little bit of a vignette here to draw our eyes in just a touch more to the tortoise. Um, but great job with lighting and great job with perspective and lens choice. Next image, please. Great. Oh my gosh. I love that it. it's like black and then orange and then uh, blue. Gosh, the simplicity of those three graphic tones and, and how those are put together in this one frame is just done really, really lovely. Um, I would have liked it to have been worked a little bit more, maybe finding different places that have different shapes. Um, to kind of even make it more graphic, maybe getting a little lower or something like that. Um, the eye movement doesn't quite work for some reason. I keep, like my eye keeps leaving the frame. Um, so when I look at this image, my eye follows the yellow and then leaves. And I would have liked some more lines that led me in and kept me into the frame. But gosh, what a great concept. Please keep shooting this and keep looking for different shapes when you shoot this. Next image, please. Really enjoy the little bit of light that's highlighting this egret. I think it's an egret, right? It's a herring, herring, herring. <laughs> oh my goodness, I need a coffee. Um, but I really enjoy the fact that, you know, we're seeing so many different textures from the, the feathers to the color on the neck. And we're seeing the, the herring look off um, and step off. It kind of brings us on that journey with them as well. Um, I will say there's something that seems a little bit off with the balance here. Um, maybe it's the tree on the right and having nothing framing on the left. Like once again, my eyes kind of keep leaving the frame, frame left because of the, the herring looking off. Um, so I would have liked to have maybe, maybe if that busyness on the right was lessened or moved in a way where it wasn't there, I think the image would be a little stronger or if it framed on both sides. Um, but there's something with the balance that I think could have been improved. Um, next image, please. I love the simplicity of this. And one of the things that I do enjoy is even though this is like a landscape, um, I love that there's these strange lines that lead you back to the tree. Like those lines from the from the bottom and then the the two lines. Yeah, it's got this great way. This is it's really interesting that, you know, I almost can't even look away from the tree because those lines keep leading me back. And I think that that's beautiful. Um, and it's also just the shape and the kind of the positioning of the tree. It makes you kind of think that this might be some sort of harsh landscape with the way the wind is going or the way the sun you know goes up and down but for that tree to grow in that position has a story on its own I think one thing that would have elevated this image is maybe a little more detail on the sky the sky's got kind of a, um, a flat feeling to it so maybe a different time of day or something like that would have elevated it even more but but great job with use of lines and eye movement in this landscape image next image please I love this, this, I, I love the textural to the front and the back, that green grass and how, you know, great lens choice there to separate. Um, this one looks like an egret. Gosh, am I, no. Um, but great job <laughs> separating the bird from the foreground and the background with the lens choice. I also really enjoy the light and the shapes and the use of negative space. The use of that space to the right uh, is done really, really well. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe just a little more, um, you know, my eyes a little bit distracted by some of the sticks, uh, especially in the bottom of the frame. Um, but sometimes when you've got this perfect moment lined up, waiting just a little longer to see if something happens um, would even elevate the image more. But beautiful job with your negative space and, and your lighting and your lens choice. Next image, please. For this category, minimalistic, simple, my gosh, this photographer took us on a journey to show us what, what they thought was really, really beautiful. And this thistle is stunning. And the, the orange and the orange in the foreground and the background and, and the separation from the background, like absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm trying to think of what I, you know, for improving this image, um, 
trying to think. I might have placed it a little more on the third on the left, um, but I think that this photographer got a really stunning shot. Um, I don't really know too much to improve. I feel like the composition might have been improved just a little bit. Maybe there's a snippet too much on the top, um, snippet too much on the left. But other than that, I think this is this is a stunning image. Next image, please. A uh, great job again with that negative space. Like my gosh, having that blue and having you know almost this circle feel from the the eagle's arms, the lighting on the eagle, the the position, the moment, everything is done so so well. I love the square crop. I love how that really complements and adds to the image. Um, and I think that like gosh, for an eagle in flight, this photographer nailed it. Like absolutely nailed it. It's it's beautiful. Um, I would have liked a little bit of a different composition. Um, so I would have liked just a little hair less on the right hand side. If I cover up the right side just a little bit, little slither, um, I find that the shape comes through a little bit more because I feel like there's just a little too much sky on the right of the eagle. Um, but that's just me being super, super picky because this is a really strong image and, and I'm at that point of being really picky because it is strong. Um, but great moment and great job and great capture. Next image, please. <laughs> great job too. Again, it's the same, you know, the, the, the butterfly leading in that negative space above. I love the lighting on this. I love the complimentary um, purple to yellow. I guess it's almost purple, but that adds to the vibrance, the use of colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel from one another. Uh, and I think that that's really, really beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, once again, I feel like you guys are so close to hitting your, your thirds, but not quite. Um, so I would have maybe cropped just another hair off the right hand side again. Um, but great job with lighting and color and, and use of negative space there. Next image, please. This is, gosh, the complimentary colors here, the red and the green and how vibrant. I mean, that ladybug is popping off my screen. I don't know if it is for you guys, but it's popping off my screen. And I'm sorry, lady beetle. I get told all the time, not ladybug anymore, they're lady beetles. Um, but I love the details that this photographer has captured, like with macro, like to be able to get all the details in those rain droplets is so nice. And being able to see this repetitive shape, like the circle of the lady beetle and then the circle on the, the water droplets and the spots, like it feels very spotted and I love that. Uh, I love the leading line that goes right into the lady beetle. And I love the fact that the background is just turned into a solid color by you know the choice of, of, of blurring the background. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful shot. This image, um, the crop might have enhanced it even more. This doesn't need to be in an, a, a traditional, I, I would have loved to have seen this as more of a um, horizontal, like I would have loved a little bit cropped off the top. See if you guys like take your hand and just crop just a little bit off the top. You can see how, um, see what I'm saying. Uh, having a little bit more of a landscape shot would have maybe elevated it even more, um, but, but great job with this. Next image, please. Oh, this is, this is so peaceful. I want to be there. <laughs> uh, I love the textural aspects of the water. I love the negative space and that orange above. And I love just even the mood, the person sitting and just taking it all in. Like there's a great feel and that feel is enhanced by the color and, and, and by the positioning. And I love that the person isn't cut by their horizon. The person is really framed well in that space. And that was done really well from the photographer seeing that. And I also like that the shape of the, of the sail is pointing towards the negative space. So it's a good use of negative space and, and, and great use of using feel um, in this image. Next image, please. This is such a fun texture play. And I love that I can see how beautiful the, the photographer saw this, the texture of this, this dying leaf. Like um, maybe they can, you know, this seems like it's a, a good intro for next week's, isn't it? Decay for next week's or next month's. <laughs> it's like already getting a head start on that one too there. Um, but beautiful job with this simple minimalistic and, and great job with the, the lighting. And I love not just the texture of the leaf, but 
the textures of the background and, and kind of how even those textures, like the lines pull you into the leaf, which is really, really nice. Like those circular lines in the, the bottom right. And then the lines that go up from, from the bottom left, like everything pulls me in and it's like, there's a flow to this. Uh, and I think that that's really, really nice. Um, once again, like I keep talking about crop, like I would have liked a little more space on the right hand side because I, I don't like that that leaf is cut on the right side by the right frame. Um, so sometimes making sure that you get all those elements can even elevate it more, but, but great job showing us beauty in something so simple. Next image, please. Perfect timing here with that light going through the sail. It's so nice seeing that that bright orange. I love the orange to blue. And I love how the oranges are treated so well and the blues are treated well, not just in the sky, but also in the water. Like it's just, it's such a soothing, great feel. I think it's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Um, keep an eye on all sides of your frames, guys. So that little black speck coming in from the left-hand side of the water. Do you see that, Sam? Can you put your mouse over that? Yeah, that area. I would have, I would have loved if that was just cropped out. <laughs> um, our eyes get really drawn to those, those inconsistencies and those moments of contrast. And my eye, once I looked at that, I have trouble unseeing it and not looking at that. Um, so I would have liked a little bit of a tighter crop. Um, and then when I, when I cover that side up with my hand, it's like my eyes play really nicely between the two boats. And I love that. Um, but great mood and great image. Next image, please. What a great moment, my goodness, <laughs> that poor little fish. It's so funny because there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on, but we are so drawn to the simplicity of that little fish in the air and, and the position of the fish in between the bird's mouth. Um, so at first when I looked at this, I was like, I don't know if this is simple and minimalistic, but then I kept on going back to the fish and I was like, oh, I see it being simple and minimalistic because it's like this little fish in this big scene. Uh, and I really, really enjoy that, but great timing and great moment. Next image, please. There's such an amazing feel here. Like the, the, the feel from the, the hands and the, this photographer really, I feel like this photographer knows about, uh, about movement, about, you know, using color. I love that there's like this, this repetitive color and the lips to the fingernails. And, and that's just such a nice touch. And there's, there's a feel here with something so simple. It's like a little tiny expression. You feel this calm and peace and, and she seems happy, uh, not overly expressively happy, but simple, contently happy. And I like that there's such a great feel. I love how my eye goes through the hands, to the chin, to the lips, even the use of the the vignette in the background keeps my eye trapped into that feeling, which I think is really nice. Um, to make this image even stronger, I would have liked to see a little more consistency with the skin tones, because it seems like the skin tones are different from like the chin to the nose area to especially this palm area it looks like it's going a bit green. So I would have liked to see that stay more consistent. Um, but other than that, like beautiful job with mood and expression and minimalistic and negative space and eye movement. Next image, please. <laughs> this is fun too, because it's like just the mouth, but it's so expressive and it makes you feel. And, and I love like, I don't know, anyone that's taken any of my classes or workshops knows how much I push like trying trying to get people's eyes to move in a golden ratio in a Fibonacci spiral. And like this photographer just nailed that with my eye goes through the, you know, the left side and then the turtleneck and then back and it, it focuses in on her mouth. And it's just this beautiful spiral eye movement that I'm like, ah, so cool. Um, once again, though, I would really like to see a little more consistency in the skin tone. Like the tongue goes to this really kind of unpleasing yellow in there. And I would have liked to like, I don't know, yellow on tongues always make me think somebody's like not feeling well or something like that. And the teeth going yellow. Um, so a little bit more consistency in the tonality, but oh my gosh, I love this image. Um, next image, please. This is so cool. Like the balance of that little moon. Um, and, and, and 
in the wind tower. It's just, it's so nice. It's so simple. And it's so cool that my eye goes to that little tiny moon and that that moon is like part of this narrative. It's, it's great too, because I've got this great Z eye movement going from the moon to the wind tunnel, to the, the sky, and then even to the shape of the, of the structure. And, and I love the simplicity and I mean, wow, the textures in the sky, this, this photographer really nailed this, this topic. And I, I love the composition. I love how it's, um, you know, placed on the left side balanced with the moon on the right side and, and yeah, a beautiful, beautiful, minimalistic shot. Great job. Thank you. Can we see the thumbnails? Try to get them all on one screen would be lovely. This is, what's the category called again? Um, intermediate color. Intermediate color. Perfect. And what is, uh, I'm assuming we've got some honorable mentions this time, right? Two honorable mentions. Two honorable mentions. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, this one's hard actually. <laughs> I like a lot of these. So, um, and I can't, is this, this is all of them? There's, okay. Yes. Okay. So number one is the ladybug. Number two is the heart with the screws. Oh, heart screws. And number three is the, the other heart. This one? Yeah, so that's first, second, and third. And then I've got two honorables. Um, uh, I'm, I apologize, I'm gonna give three honorable mentions and not two. If that's okay. all right. No problem. Um, number 20 with the sailboat, um, the moon with the, the 24, oh, sugar. <laughs> um, and then I want to do number 22 as well. Mm, which one? 22. Yeah, that one, number 22, the hand with the face. Yeah. So, so three numbers. Which one was number two? I couldn't get the file number off that. File okay. number 28. File number 28. All right. Second place. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just going to go backwards from what you said. So. Okay. So this one is entitled Maybe by Justina. Thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, this means a lot because I'm a huge fan of your uh, photography, uh, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm a fan of yours too. This is stunning. I want to see more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I've got to go back to the... <laughs> I'm just going to go to this one. Okay. That one is Greg and it's Crescent and Windmill. Yeah, that was taken over at uh, Clodmore Park a couple of weeks ago. And interestingly enough, it was sunset uh, for the most part. I stuck around for a little while and just to the right, you can't see it in this photo, but uh, you could pick up Jupiter and Saturn as they're moving towards a great conjunction. They're just little tiny dots of light mm -hmm. then, but I suspect in the next uh, couple of days, this might be a good shot. That's awesome. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it this way. All right. Ah, okay. That's easier. <laughs> that is the Key West Sunset by Fred Gillis. Well, that's what it was. <clears throat> and <laughs> honest to God, I meant to clip that out. <laughs> oh, this little piece right here? Yeah. Oh, wow. I just, I just I, there was a lot more of it. Ah. So I, I didn't get it right. And I was focusing more on the uh, transition in the orange and blues. Oh, okay. Beautiful job with that transition. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, third place. Third place is Love is on the Line by Christina. I am super excited because I am obsessed with your work, Christy. So to have you actually give me a ribbon. I'm really glad I was muted because I kind of went, like a little bit um so i just i'm i'm a fan of the bleeding heart so i had to take it oh beautiful beautiful image of the lighting just makes this pop and it's stunning great job christina 
And that one is, hold on, number 28. That is Partially Mended by Ted Pennington. Oh, Ted. Yeah, so um, that, the idea just kind of came to me when I was trying to come up with some ideas. Um, I guess perhaps all the uh, people who have had their hearts broke by loved ones in hospitals that they can't go visit in the past nine months or so. And we've also been working on redoing our deck. I had a whole bunch of these uh, long deck screws laying around and so that probably also kind of contributed to the idea. Thank you. Thank Good you so you, much. Tim. Good to see you, Tim. And first place. First place, way down here. Oh, well, so it's entitled Ladybug by Spamir. Yeah, hi. Um, so this was actually at the sunflower field in, in, in August, but then just on going out, I was looking around and the, just saw this ladybug and it was really popping out because it, everything else was green. And my original actually was a tighter crop, but I have this tendency to, to crop everything very tight because I like details and textures. And I was thinking, okay, this is minimalist com com uh, competition. So let me go back to the original and, <laughs> uh, um, uh, you know, bring some more space back into it, but uh, maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> Well, it's beautiful. I got first place in this category. And this category was hard. A lot of amazing images. So congratulations. I love this image. Thanks. Great job. All right. Oh, somebody wants to know. I'm curious too. That white blob with the black lines. <laughs> what that? Oh actually? yeah. Let's go back to that. Ah, oh, that one is called Casa Batillo by Elizabeth. This so one? cool. Is Elizabeth on? No worries. We'll just head okay. on to the next category. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is intermediate monochrome, right? Right. Sorry, let me just take notes of where we're at. So we've got three categories left. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Rocking and rolling. It's so nice, those leading lines that go straight into the subject, like the, I, I guess he or she was trailing <laughs> that luggage <laughs> that made this really cool line that led us right in. Uh, one thing though, is I wanna make sure edits are, are felt and not seen. And I see a little bit of a halo and glow around uh, the main subject there. Um, and sometimes you can't tell when you're doing edits unless your, your monitor is calibrated. Um, but just be a little bit lighter handed with your edit, but, but a great job using the space and the scene and leading us into the subject. Next image, please. I really enjoy the, the birds taking off into the, into the scene, into the negative space with all that you know use of the space on the right hand side. Um, also great moment um, right at the beginning of flight with the arms all the way out. Uh, for a monochrome category, I would have liked to have seen a, a, a bit of a different edit. I would have liked to have seen more richness in the blacks as well as maybe possibly some tones in the whites. It's a little too blown for me. Um, so playing around with those lights and darks and playing around in your edit, I think would have elevated this even more, but great composition and great use of negative space. Next image, please. This is also just a great use of using black and white to bring out textures. I love the textures in the bird and how we can like really see those feathers and really see that detail there. Uh, I also like how much the birds kind of popping from the background. Um, and th that being said, I, I would like to see a little bit more, a little bit more information. Um, I find that that black um, is clipped quite a bit. Um, so the black in the neck, and the back feathers of the bird blend in with the background. I would have liked to have been able to see where the bird's body stops as well as where the background starts, um, as well as there's some blotchiness to the black in the background. Um, so a calibrated monitor might have picked up on that a little bit better. Um, but I really like how much the texture is coming out and how much the, the bird is popping from the background. Next image, please. What a great um, just use of geometry and shapes and like bringing us into something that's like 
um, you know, so abstract, but yet beautiful. I love how the way the web is, is lit, like the, the, I guess it, possibly I'm going to assume it was sunlight, morning light, um, but positioning that web or like photographing that web where it's in the light and then positioning yourself so that the background was in shadow uh, really, really helped pop those, those lines and, and, and bring that out. And I also really enjoy, um, you know, how the focus really brings us into the middle and how it, it, it kind of moves to abstract around the edges. Um, but, but great job showing us beauty in something so simple. Next image, please. This image is just, it's, it's stunning. I love that it's a non-traditional. I love that it's the back of a flower. Um, I love the water droplets and, and the textures that kind of come out. Um, and also not just the texture in the water, but the texture in the leaf and the fact that the, the lighting is kind of done in a way to really bring out those textural elements and the black and white is done so masterfully that it even enhances that texture. Um, I also love the, the choice of the square crop, um, as well as the, the fact that the flower really pops from the background, um, but, but beautiful, unusual image that shows us something very simple, but something really stunning and something different. Next image, please. Um, great use of texture in black and white. I love all the lines leading in. I love my eye movement in this, and I, I, I love being able to see even like, you know, the texture of the wood, the texture of the handles, um, everything's come out so well. Um, for this image, I possibly would have just liked seeing something a little bit more, maybe, I'm trying to think. Um, it seems like it's a little tilted, but that could just be me. Um, but maybe just a little, sometimes also images can be a little enhanced if you darken them and then pop the lights. Like I, a lot of times pull my images darker and then bring out my highlights more to make that black and white even richer. Um, or maybe it, it needs to just like really push the symmetry and have that middle line in the middle, but um, something could have made this image have a little more impact. I'm not quite sure. So keep with the subject, keep moving around, keep playing around, play with different crops um, and play with different uh, amounts of contrast. Um, but I really do enjoy the lines and the textural aspects of this. Next image, please. And like I said, I'm just one opinion. I may be completely off. You may be like, what is she talking about? <laughs> but I, I, this is just my opinion on all of these. So I hope that's all right. Um, oh, goodness. I love all these matches. It's like a perfect match. I, 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 oh, you know, the more I look at this, the more I see. Like, so this photographer has literally, it's like such a cool concept of time um, because it's like these matches are going around in a circle and they've all been burned for different lengths of time. Um, and that brings a spiral in, which, you know, like you've got the match to the left that hasn't been burnt at all or just the very tip. And then you've got some that, God, that's clever. <laughs> it took me a minute, but I now see it. Um, and I think that that's really, really cool that there's so much of that information. Um, gosh, I wish I could see this bigger. Is there any way, I know we haven't done this on the others. Can we just zoom in just a, just a touch? Um, yeah, gosh, I would have liked to have seen maybe, I know this competition was all about the negative space, but I would have liked to have seen this even tighter. It's got just a touch too much of that negative space as well as like playing with the whole clock thing and making this into a square crop would have been really cool. So things like that, I think would have like, even elevated that image more, but I could assume that you probably were putting the extra space in there because of the theme and the topic, but I would have liked to have seen it a little closer. Um, but my goodness, what a great, what a great conceptual shoot. Great use of black and white. I love this. Great play on time. I'd like to hear you talk about this. <laughs> Next image, please. Um, really cool lines and great textures. Once again, I find that like this black and white really favors the middle gray tones and I would have liked to have seen more punch in the blacks and more punch in the whites. Um, another way to get stronger at black and whites is to read um, about Ansel Adams zone system, um, which is a system that he used to use for printing his images to make sure there were 
you know, shadows with details and whites with details, but I have incorporated that a lot into my editing of black and white. And I feel like that would elevate that even more, um, as well as, uh, you know, that information on the right hand side of this, um, there's a line that's kind of cut a little bit on the right hand side, I would have liked to have seen that cropped out. Um, but, but great job with lines and textures and I really enjoyed my eye movement in this image. Next image, please. Ooh, I love the punchiness of the whites and the blacks here. And I like the balance. I like the balance of the guy or the girl, I can't quite tell, um, on the bench with the tree. It's a really fun play of this light and dark. Um, that being said, I would have liked to have seen a little more crop from the left-hand side. Like if I hold my book over on the left-hand side and crop a little bit of that space out, I find that it balances just a little bit better because you've got such a heavy object on the right and such a small object on the left. Um, that I think that the negative space is just a little bit uh, hair on the heavy side as well. Um, but I really enjoy the textural aspects of this image. Next image, please. Oh, goodness, look at the shapes here. That's so cool. And the eye movement, like my, it's, it's nice because the light like mimics the bowl and mimics the shape of the bowl. And it's, it's, it, my eye goes on this really beautiful journey here. And I think that that's really cool. And I actually like, as much as I'm usually really anti things getting cut and cropped, I like that the spoon is just cropped at that spot and that little element um, pushes our eye back around and it's just lit so well. Um, yeah, this is, this is beautiful. Next image, please. Ooh, I love the leading lines in the background. Go down to the church. It's really nice. Um, really nice too with all the, the, you know, not just the building, but the, the landscape and the textural landscape that's around. Um, I think that this is a, a really nice image. I, I, would, I would have liked to have seen a little more pure blacks maybe in the church itself, um, because I, I think that the, um, the image would have the image will be a little bit stronger with, I feel like the tones are kind of in the middle. Um, I'm not sure here and I could be completely wrong, but I feel like there might have been some whites that were blown out and then tried to recover. Like if you look at that area just to the right of the, the cross, just to the right and down a little bit, um, you see this kind of area that looks like it's a solid color. Um, so just be careful when you're actually taking your photo, whenever I take photos and I'm, especially if I'm shooting for black and white, I'm always looking at my histogram and I'm making sure nothing's getting clipped because my assumption, this is an assumption is that that was kind of clipped and then tried to get recovered. Um, but I could be totally wrong there. Um, but I really love the movement and the lines and the shape of this. And I, I, I like the different elements. Next image, please. This is so beautiful and it's so fun. And I love that there's like this shape and this spiral. I'm assuming that's a fox. Uh, and I really love the textural elements of the, um, of the, the grass around it. Um, one thing that I thought, you know, I, and now that I look at it, I, I do see is um, the fox is a little soft. And I think that's from the one one hundredth of a second there. Uh, that one one hundredth of a second, the fox is probably breathing and moving a little bit. So that shutter speed, let's, Samantha, can you just zoom in on the fox just a touch? Because with how sharp that background is, um, it's a shame that that fox isn't, isn't as tack sharp as the grass because the grass is where my eyes go. And I would have loved my eyes to have gone more into the fox. Um, I shoot a lot safer. A lot of times I'm shooting it um, you know, you, this, this photographer has a long lens shooting at 168 millimeters. Um, when you're shooting at a long lens like that, uh, you want to make sure as well that you, you do for shutter speed, like one, at least one 200th of a second, um, to make sure you're getting that completely sharp, but that could be movement from the Fox. Either way, I, this image would have been unbelievably killer if that was a little sharper, but it's such a great moment and it's a, it's a, it's a great shape. And, and I love the use of black and white and textures. Next image, please. Oh, this is so fun. I like want to slide down with them. <laughs> like these penguins are having a good time. And I love how, you know, the category is like this, you know, talks about the, the space around and there's this beautiful negative space that the, the penguins are skiing into or, um, you know, 
I guess I can say they're skiing. I don't know if that's anamorphizing too much with they're sliding into, um, but beautiful, beautiful use of negative space and playfulness. And I, I love how the, the black of the penguins are really popping out against the white of that snow. It's great lines and great use of negative space. And what a fun image. Next image, please. Um, beautiful shape and moment. I, I love the tips and the feathers coming off the wings. It's so nicely done. Uh, for this image, I think it would have been better um, to have not had all the kind of black and white in the middle tonal range. I would have loved to have seen Puncher more strong blacks and, and, and more whites as opposed to everything kind of huddled in the middle. But great use of the sky and the negative space and, and good moment with the, the feathers coming out. Next image, please. It's so nice. Like, I love that you guys are like from my old neck of the woods. It's like, oh, I know all these places and parks and <laughs> animals. And even though I'm getting all my birds wrong tonight. Um, but uh, nice use of negative space. I, I, I love the white of the, the monument popping out. And I love the reflection there. I think it's, it's beautiful. Um, I would have liked to have seen more tones in the blacks. Um, the blacks seem like they are probably a little clipped here. And Samantha, I would love for you to throw out that histogram just so that I can show people what it looks like for the clipped blacks. Um, so yeah, hit that. And do you guys see, if you see all of that de detail, it's like way too far over to the left. Um, so there's a lack of, of detail in the shadow zones. And I would have liked to have seen a little more detail and keeping an eye on your histogram, you can make sure that that you've got more details in there by not having everything too heavily over on the left side like that. Uh, I know this photographer probably chose to have things quite dark, but if you can still have things dark and still have tones in them. Um, it takes a lot of, of time and mastering your black and white editing techniques, but I think that would have elevated this image even more. Uh, next image, please. I love that I can see settings and stuff. <laughs> that's okay that I'm talking about settings, but I think that's really cool that I can see them. Um, goodness, this is so cool. Look at the textures that the photographer got on the moon. And I, I love the textures in the crescent moon because I like that you can kind of see the stars through it. I think that that's so cool. Uh, and I think it's really nice, the, the, the black and white and how the black and white uh, really brings out those textural components. Um, ISO 2000, 300 millimeter. Sorry, I'm just looking at all the settings here. Um, but yeah, no, this is a beautiful image and great use of sky and negative space. And um, I would have possibly even liked a little bit of a different crop, like playing around with a square crop might have really even brought out the shape even more um, or just clipping a little bit from the bottom, but something for the crop seems just a little bit off. Um, but other than that, I love the textures and I love the use of negative space in this image. Next image, please. This has got such great tonal quality. Uh, I love that first petal and just the layers that you see in it, as well as the layers that you see as you go up the flower. Uh, I think that's just so beautiful. Um, I, I do a lot of like studying how people's eyes move. And there's like this study where people put all these where scientists put pads on people's faces and they watch eye movement. And, and we're definitely drawn to expressions, but we're also drawn to moments of contrast. Uh, so in this image, the one thing that I think could have been elevated is the shadows on the leaves on the bottom, that shadow on that leaf to the bottom. Um, the other one to the left. Yeah, right there. That, that moment of contrast, it's one of the biggest contrast, like contrast on the actual subject. And my eye keeps going to it and I don't want my eye to go to it. So I would have liked that shadow to maybe have not been there. Um, but that's me being really picky because this is such a masterful shot and I'm just being super picky here. I think that it would have been even elevated if, if the shadows were maybe, you know, those shadows were a little less harsh so that I could really just get drawn into the textural aspects. But wow, this is, this is a stunning shot. I love how much it pops. And I, I love the use of black and white here and the edit here. Like there's definitely like the tones in there that I love the rich tones and, and beautiful, beautiful image. Next image, please. I love that there's like this attitude in her or his body shape. Um, and also the fact that 
you know, from behind, we're looking into the sunset and we're looking into the horizon with the subject. And I, I really enjoy the leading lines from the foreground that, that go to the subject. It keeps my eye engaged and I'm really drawn to this subject. Um, but yeah, no, beautiful job with the, the use of, of space and the black and white. And I love the pure silhouette. I think that that's done really, really well. Nice image, next image, please. This is so interesting because it's such a nice line. And, you know, the, the pulls have this really cool like handrail that you, you never look at it from this angle where it's just a line. You're always usually looking from the side. And I think that that's really interesting. It's really quite, it's, it's so graphic and it's so unique. And it's like, you know, I've seen that a million times, but I've never seen this shape. And it's so cool when a photographer can take us on a new journey with something that we know. Um, the black and white is treated so well from, from the texture of the, the tile or the foreground concrete, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but that texture is just so beautiful as well as the texture of the shine of the handrail and then the texture of the water that kind of goes off. Um, but I, and I love that it's like, dead center, you know, because we, we always hear about putting things on the thirds and stuff like that. But it's really nice that there's like this sharp line in the dead center, like uh, bravo for showing me something completely unique and different. I, I love this image. Next image, please. I love the category and how it's like, you know, talking about simple and minimal. And I photographed a lot of alligators and crocodiles, but there's a journey here. Like we go straight to the teeth something so small and something so cool. And the teeth are composed so well with those, those eyes leading to the teeth and the, the smooth water and even the choice of crop here. Like this is, this is a shot that's left a visual impact on me. And I will definitely remember because I've never seen a shot like this. And you think about like crocs and their teeth and like to show that detail and also to use the textures of the water and the shape, like, um, and use the use of black and white and the fact that the lightest part, the whitest part are those teeth. And that's a great use of black and white that brings us into what the photographer was seeing. And, and I, I love this journey and I am really excited about this image. Next image, please. <laughs> this is a great use of black and white too, my gosh. The use of the blurred white background behind the mantis is done so well. And it's done in this way that we get totally trapped into this mantis's eyes and even the lines from the legs and, and how the lines are moving us in and keeping us like really, really engaged. And also like, you know, the wood and the texture of the wood. And I, I usually like a blurred white background somewhere is just gonna like pull your eye like totally in the wrong direction and distract you. But here it just frames, it's used to frame the mantis. And that's so freaking cool. Um, once again, gosh, you intermediates, you guys are freaking killing it with the monochrome. <laughs> Dance people, you guys got to watch out. These guys are coming up and they're freaking good. <laughs> but I'm really impressed with this intermediate monochrome category. It was like, it's, it's awesome. Next image, please. Sorry, I don't mean to go on my little side tangents there, but <laughs> um, beautiful expression. My gosh, the texture and the tones, those eyelashes and that eye, like, I am so drawn in. I love the shallow depth of field and how that really pulls us into the eyes and the editing of the monochrome is done so well. Like this is edited just, just great. And it makes me really happy and, and great movement as well. Like the, the kind of tilt as well as the shoulder and how the shoulder leads us in and the tilt keeps us in. Like I've got this great spiral eye movement and this is a, this is a beautiful shot. Next image, please. This is a great play of different tones and textures. Look at the tone of the, the, the ball. I don't know if this is a ball or an egg or, or something, but um, it's really, really nice to see that, that texture to, to the outside as well as see the shadow and how the shadow has these different blacks to grays and, and how they interact and how they overlap and produce even more grays. Um, what a great fun play on black and white. Um, once again, I would have liked the crop to have been a little different, a little too much information on the bottom. Um, so maybe cropping that in and maybe cropping a little bit of the information to the left, a little like crop a little from the bottom, a little to the left, I think would have enhanced even more. Um, but what a fun play on black and white tones and textures. 
Um, goodness, strong category, guys. <laughs> Great job, intermediates. This was intermediate, right? Yes. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> you guys are good. All right. Hey, okay. Cheryl. Yes. How many? Uh, it's the same as before. There's 23 images here. So there's two honorable mentions. Okay. Let me just- Or three. <laughs> no worries. Oh my gosh. There were so many. Jeez, like I'm going to have trouble with this. Okay. Um... Sorry, you guys are making it hard on me. Well, number one for sure is the crocodile. I am obsessed with that shot. Um, number two is, I'm deciding between two of them for number two. You know, dang it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, two is going to have to be the back of the flower, number five. And then three is going to be the pool, number 19. And we're going to do, I've got to do the matches as an honorable mention for pure creativity. That's fantastic. Um, I've got to do the the manta uh, the um, prey mantis for an honorable mention. Awesome. Um, and you know what? You guys are gonna have four honorable mentions. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do number four and number twenty two. So the web and then the 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 face. Excellent. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> all right. So we're gonna start with honorable mentions. All right. Hold on. I'm still I'm still marking them. Okay. Okay. We have honorable mention. This is Minimalist Portrait by Justina. Thank you again. Yay. I knew that face. <laughs> okay. We'll go to the praying mantis. The praying mantis is 63. Uh, what you're looking at by Justina. Oh, thank you. good job. Thank you. Okay. And then do you want to do the matches? Yep. Okay. 48. That one, uh, number 48 is Burn Time by Tim Pennington. Oh. Yeah, you were right on with the uh, concept of a clock only flipped a little bit uh, reversed. But uh, yeah, just kind of an idea that we came up with looking for ideas of what to do for this. So nice. good job. That's really yeah, nice. I love it. And the, and the web. web. The web is called Web by Christina. Very nice. Right place, right time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, number third place. Jumping in by Elizabeth. Hi, folks. Hey. So, hey. So this was actually by a lake, and it was this huge lake in West Virginia, and um, they were like. A, a, a loading dock behind it and a rowboat for the back. So yeah, thank you so much. Like uh, Elizabeth, tell us about, um, hold on just a second, Casa Patillo, where was that? You've taken a lot of interesting images that look yeah, like- Yeah, that's okay. actually in Barcelona. Um, okay. It was in Barcelona a couple of years ago and it was at one of the museums of um, uh, Gaudi museums. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was really neat. I liked it too. Great, thank you. Second place. And this is second place. This is the flower by Christina. Nice. We're creative names, but yes. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I love Meadowlark after a rain. In the morning, it's just pretty. Nice. And then first and then place. We have Snaggletooth by Fred. Yeah, I had done a blue version of this before with them on the other side. But I reprocessed for the negative space and put them over there where you're running into them. And I, I like this one much better. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. 
All right, our next grouping um, has 14 in it. Are you doing okay, Christy? Yeah, I'm doing just fine. We have two left, right? Two yep. small groups. Two like, small groups two. left. Yep. Go. Let me read. Rocking and rolling. Am I doing all right with? Oh, you're one. It's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, great. You're doing great, especially with this many images. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this one has 14 and there's one honorable mention. And this one is um, experience Three color of 14. So it's got uh, three places one on. Oh, that's what I did for my notes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Great. Um, great use of minimalism. I love the silhouette. I love the fishing. I love the placement. Um, I would think that the crop might improve it a little bit. That information up in the upper left, that one little black spot is really distracting and pulls my eye away. Um, and this image I think might've been a really nice like landscape crop. So it might be nice to just kind of crop a little bit out, out of the top, um, which with the fishing pole and the lines and the rocks, it might've kind of mimicked those. But I, I really enjoy the simplicity and the color and the scene and the feel. Great job. Next image, please. All right, we're gonna have to, sorry, on my screen, I just want you to zoom into the red on the right. I wanna see what that is there. Oh, that's a little cooking device or something, Eskimo. Okay, let's zoom out, perfect. I really love the use of space here. I love the textures of the trees. I love that bright red pop. I think it's really, really interesting. Um, I would have liked a little more context, maybe a human element or something like that to kind of add to the image even more. Um, you know, I hate to say I do spend a lot of time outdoors and I still am not quite sure the story here. Um, so I would have liked to have a couple more hints to what the story is, but I really love the, the object and how it's overwhelmed by the scene and the nature and all the background there. It's done really, really well. Um, beautiful job. Next image, please. Oh goodness, I love being on an airplane and seeing the light hit the lakes and just these little tiny sparkles. That's what I'm assuming is happening here. Um, something a little bit more elevated and seeing that light hit lakes and just that little tiny gold and, and you know, like that bright golden reflection. And I, I, I really love the, the blue up top um, and how these, these colors work together. Great job with minimalism and great job with these little tiny sparkles of beauty inside such a, a big scene that you know you can't really see the details but you're still kind of overwhelmed by it next image please this is really interesting to see this this shape on the ground it's it's like you know there's hardly many shapes that kind of mimic that and have such a smooth edge to it and i love the graphicness of the the shape of the ground as well as the the silhouette of the person walking um i would have liked to have seen more images, different spots of the stride. I know that sounds strange, but whenever I'm shooting silhouettes like this, I kind of clap or snap my fingers or do something inside to kind of figure out exactly what part of the stride I'm trying to capture. Um, and I would have liked to have maybe seen a, a, a different shape come out. I think it would have accentuated a little more instead of this awkward looking step. Um, but my goodness, I really love the fact that you can see little tiny bits of mountains in the background kind of peeking through, maybe even bringing those out just a touch more, which they probably would be brought out in print. This, this is probably one of those images just like edited for print, not for web, which I love because I love editing for print, not for web. Um, but I bet that detail would pop so beautifully in a, in a print, which would be really, really nice. Do you guys do print competitions? Normally, typically we do print. This is we're only digital because of the situation. Yeah, <laughs> we oh don't do gosh. digital okay. normally. <laughs> well, bravo to this photographer for editing for print. But when you're editing for the web competitions, try to sometimes bring out some of that detail that may get lost from the illumination of the the monitors. But not to tell you to ever, ever, ever edit for web because I hate editing for web. So don't really take my advice there. But. <laughs> Sorry, that's like so contradictory. But I love this. It's a beautiful image, great graphic shot. Next image, please. This is really nice seeing that pink and the green and the yellow and seeing that through the white. Uh, I really enjoy the play of colors and the play of texture and the flower coming in from the left hand side and all the use of the negative space is just, it's stunning. And it's, it's such a soft, beautiful image. 
Um, I'd like to see you elevate this and push this concept even more. So keep shooting it and seeing if you can push it more and do even more with it. But, but great job playing with color and playing with graphic and minimal space. Next image, please. <laughs> I love the orange and or the red to the blue. It's so nice. And it's one of the things I think is really nice about this image is not just that the logo is kind of pointing you in and keeping your eye contained, but that that light streak across the car is also, I'm assuming this is a car, right? <laughs> not a car person. Okay. <laughs> but it looks like a car. So the light on the car is also like bringing your eye in and helping framing and contain on the top, which is just so nice that the tonality of the, the texture of that reflection. And, um, and I love the pop of red on the 88. It's done, you know, it's great, great image. Next image, please. Oh my goodness. I love the red. How fun is that? The red in the background. Can we zoom in on that person just because we're looking at a monitor? I don't usually. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's really cool. Yeah, that's funny. That's all I wanted to see. Um, I really like the texture of the foreground and I love the texture of the sky. And I love that the person is popping with the red. So good for this category, the minimalistic, the simplicity. Um, I would have liked, I think that the fact that the the subject is kind of standing hands in pocket looking at the, the camera. I would have liked to have seen them interact with the landscape as opposed to the photographer. I think that would have elevated this even more um, because it, it makes it look staged, which maybe that's what you were going for, which is great. Um, but I think this would have been really fun if there was something else going on or some movement or or the, the subject interacting with the landscape or looking into the landscape or something like that would have elevated it even more for me. Next image, please. This is so simple and so beautiful. My gosh, the the way this has been edited and treated and, and like there's really not many flaws to this image. Um, it's shot really well. I love the step. I love the positioning of the bird and into the negative space. And I love how simple there's like barely any colors here, but then there's that bright yellow beak. Um, and I keep going to that bright yellow beak. And I think that that's really nice. And even like the continuation of the shape of the neck going down through the leg, like it's this great S that just continues throughout. Um, I don't really have much that can improve this image. It's a beautiful image. Uh, next image, please. This is so stunning. I, I, I can't tell if it looks like mist going over a mountain, but it could just be fog over a rock. <laughs> um, either way, that that blue color is so cool. And the marble and the it peeking out from the texture of the, the air and the space around it. Like, it's just, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. It's so graphic, but yet at the same time, like it's, it's lit really well. For, it's lit for textures. It's lit for tones. Uh, I love the blue and the yellow and the colors that come out. And I love the fact that it's around in the middle of so much white space. I think that that's, that's gorgeous. Um, beautiful image. Next image, please. Oh, this is really cool too. Um, it's really interesting, I, the choice of sometimes like landscape photographers to shoot, not landscape mode, but in vertical mode. Uh, and I, I could see the photographer here seeing the layers of the sky and how beautiful those layers are and wanting to add that into the narrative. And I appreciate and applaud that. I would have liked to have seen possibly that tree um, not fade and disappear into that horizon so much. So maybe a lower position or something that would put that tree into the sky a bit more so it doesn't half get lost. I think that would have elevated it as well as making sure you've got tones in the whites. Um, the white seemed to be a little bit too white for me. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little more texture. Um, I'm not sure if they're blown out or not, but it looks like they're either blown or very close to being blown out. Um, next image, please. I've never seen anything like this and I love that. I love how graphic it is. I love the black and the yellow in the minimum space and like the, you know, using that white around and using the, the background to enhance that color and enhance the graphicness of this stem with its leaves. I think that's done really, really well as well as like the positioning and the movement. Um, this is a beautiful image. Next image, please. <laughs> 
it was really fun to see the windows and like see the windows inside the nature. It's like we usually look through the windows to see the greenery, but here we're seeing the windows in the greenery, which I think is is kind of a fun, unique play. Um, I also like the the contrast of, of nature shapes, which are so abstract and all over the place with like the man-made shapes of the window and, and those blocks. Uh, I think that that was done really, really well. I'd like to see this idea pushed and explored more, maybe shot at different times of day as opposed to, um, you know, the light seems a little bit uninteresting in the background, a little harsh. So maybe shot, if you can get that sort of reflection at a different time of day or use lights to get something like that, I think it would have elevated this image, but great concept, keep pushing this, please. Next image. I really like the simplicity here, the one leaf, the leaf pointing in towards the negative space, that yellow to orange, the texture of the leaf, the texture to the snow. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little more. So keep, keep pushing this concept, go further and see if you can go further and make something even stronger next time. Next image, please. Oh, I really wonder how the photographer got this. I'm like, what is, what is going on here? <laughs> Um, but for use of space, like I've seen, a, you know, a lot of photos and videos of people up in space and, and usually you don't see the sort of color like that, that cool color, the orange and then the blue and then against the black space. And, um, and I even like that it's, it's, it's composed like how you would never compose something. And I love that. I love that. It's like in the bottom right corner, it's not going in towards the frame, it's going out of the frame, but for some reason you've broken the rules and it works here. And I think that there's a little bit of humor to that. Like you feel like he's kind of falling even though he's not. And you feel this like kind of uneasiness. And I like that the composition makes me feel uneasy because it's not following the rules. And I like that you don't see a face and you just see the ambers and the blues. And you see the, you know, I'm really curious as to, I. I feel like we need to hear the story of this image because I'm really curious as to what's going on. But I, I, I think for the use of space and minimalistic and, and, and to show like something completely unique and different, like I definitely applaud this photographer. A beautiful, beautiful image. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do first, second, third and a honorable, right? Yes. Okay. my honorable. Okay, my first is the number eight. Second is number 14. Third is going to be number 11. And then the honorable I'm really drawn towards the, just the impact and the story behind the trees with the window, number 12. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right, so this is the window by, I only have a last name, Gassman. Audrey. Audrey. Audrey, are you on? Guess not. Oh, okay. hi, I'm on. Oh, yay. Yay. Okay. Thank you um, very much. I um, That was actually shot through an old window in a cabin in uh, North Carolina. So um, thank you very much. And I'm going to go back and try and reshoot it again. So I had a lot of fun doing it. It's actually a window through a window. There were two, there were two windows at an angle to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why it looks like it's floating. It's such a cool concept. I even love like your positioning and it's, it's, it's a never seen anything like it. And I really enjoy that. Thank you so much. Thank you. The third one is Ginkgo in October by Pat. Pat, are you on? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Shot at a uh, lady farm. Right here outside, do you see? I shot up uh, up in the sky. 
the background is against the sky. Very pretty. Oh. <clears throat> okay, second. Second. I know who that is. Space yeah. walk. Is it Charles? Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that was when Wally Shirai and I went up to repair the Hubble. Uh, so ah, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> no, Air and Space Museum. Right. <laughs> oh, cool. Good job. I actually thought that might be John's because I think John did something similar at Udvar. Oh. Mm. Very, very uh, cool. It's just, it's absolutely brilliant how you broke the rules and made it work. Like, if I feel uneasy and I love that. Yeah. <laughs> So Charles, you're a space cadet. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. <laughs> All right, first place is The Egret by Gretchen. Yay. Yay, thank you. Um, that's a, uh, yeah, Egret that I saw at Edwin Forces up in New Jersey. Um, it was one of my, it was my second day trying out a 200 to 600 millimeter lens. So I was so excited to get closer. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. It's very beautiful. I'd put that on my wall. Can uh -huh. I have it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You. I'm serious. I'm coming to your house. Okay. All right. <laughs> so okay. only part of the lens worked. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're getting close. Like we're, we're gonna, almost there. Oh, yeah, we're probably only gonna go five minutes over. I'm proud of myself. Sometimes I go yeah. way over. No, it's great. For this many images, it's awesome. Perfect. All right, we we ready to go. We in the right order. This is yes. experts monochrome or experienced monochrome. Perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Goodness, I love when people can enhance the narrative through their editing and through their shooting. And the softness of this moment and the softness of the bird is really enhanced with the monochrome and the way that this is shot in such a soft fashion. Uh, and I think that that's really, really nice. Um, you know, that being said, I, you know, might want to see a little more punch in the bird itself, just so that the bird doesn't get as lost. Um, might have want to see just just a hair a little bit more black, um, if, if or just darkness. But I think that this is a really nice enhancement of of the subject and the scene with the use of monochrome. Next image, please. This is like, it's so cool to see so little detail, but yet have such a great feel to it. I love the lines in the hat and I love the light on just the lips. And I love this crop too. And how like even the tilt that's, um, oh, somebody said they're not seeing photos. Um, are you, I can see them. Can other people see them? Give me a thumb. Cheryl, can you see yeah. everything? I see yeah, them. Yeah, we're good. Okay. See them. Okay. Don't worry. So the person that can't see him, if you drop out and then join back up, maybe that you'll get the, mm -hmm. the right screen or something like that. Um, but we want to make sure everyone can see things. So try leaving the meeting and coming it, right. It back. may be it may be the other Zoom window got overlaid. Okay, that's a good point. So try making sure that you expand to full screen. Is that what you do to fix that? Yeah, I think okay. so. Cool. Um, but let's get back to this beautiful image. And I love the little, little tiny light revealing, I mean, even the black and white texture of the lips and that little shine to the lips and the shine on that little part of the hat and the ribbon and the leather band. It's, it's, this, this image is done so well. It, it, it makes me really excited. Um, next image, please. Uh, great leading lines bringing us through this landscape. And also I like that there's so many different elements in something so simple, like from the shadows to the texture, to the leaves, to the path. Like it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more, um, a little more details to those blacks. I feel like they're just a little too clipped for me, um, but great perspective and great use of leading lines. Next image, please really cool use of negative space like i love the look of that white and the the textures that go from the the fog and the water up it's just it's so well done um that being said i find that the trees on the left they're a little um it feels like they don't belong like it's 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 like it feels a little too harshly contrasted um so maybe adding more elements so we can see a little more detail where the tree line kind of starts or something that leads in might have um, increased this image. 
Um, but I find that there's just so little of those trees on the left that it doesn't quite fit. So I would have liked to have seen more or less. Um, but wow, beautiful tonal range on, on, on the, the whites. And I love how you can see all the tones, even though it is really bright. And I love the use of space in this image. Next image, please. We've already done that. Oh, no, we haven't done that one. Um, really like the simplicity of, of the light on this baboon and how it brings out um, shape. And also like, it brings out these really cool, like I said shape, but like the square shape of the face, like being able to accentuate, accentuate that just by using light. Um, I, I, I absolutely adore that. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe a, a crop that really accentuated that shape even more, like more of a square crop or something along those lines. Um, but I think that this is just really cool and really well done and beautiful job showing, showing such a cool graphic texture and shape to a baboon. Next image, please. Oh my goodness. It's so cool when every character has a role, like every, every person in this frame adds to the narrative. Like you've got the two people on the right kind of chatting, kind of looking off and you got the people on the bench where they're totally engaged in each other's conversations. You've got the bikes, you've got the sky, you've got this great lines on the boardwalk that lead in. I think that that's, it's all done really, really nice. Um, one thing that I think might have helped the image is I, I'm always trying to avoid lines that go through heads. And I really wish that that horizon line didn't go through the heads of the people on the bench. Um, so maybe positioning them higher or lower by getting yourself higher or lower so that horizon didn't go straight through would have made the image even stronger. But beautiful job with the tones and the black and whites here. Next image, please. It's really, really cool graphic nature to this image. Uh, I like the, the camels and the people and how they're leading into that negative space. And I also really enjoy how my eyes have this great Z shape that goes down the image from the shape of the dunes down to the line that the camels are on. And then the camels kind of bring me back in. It's got this great play on graphics and shape. And I think that this is just, this is, it's done really well. Beautiful image. Next image, please. <laughs> Uh, create expressions and emotion. I love how all three of these characters are, you know, touching each other. They're all connected with their arms and their arms are making such a great shape. I like the use of negative space on the left. Uh, it really balances well with the position of the gentleman's arm as well as the way that the woman's back is. Um, so that triangle shape that they're making plays really well with the white space. Um, and great job with the lighting on this. Um, everyone's lit really well and baby's enjoying it. And then a beautiful portrait that I'm sure this family will cherish forever. Next image, please. <laughs> this image, it took me a minute and I like that. Like when I looked at the images early, I'm sitting there going like, wow, it's really interesting seeing the softness of the water, but yet the harshness of the trees. And um, I, I, I enjoy that. I thought at first that it might've been motion blur, might've been a longer exposure to the waters out of motion. But now that I'm looking at the settings, I see it's at one 500th of a second. So it's not motion blur on the water. Um, maybe that blur on the water was done in post, but yet the trees were kept sharp would be my assumption for the um, either way, I thought it was really cool. It's really well done. I really love the, the, the contrast and, you know, the fact that, you know, water is in motion and the trees are quite still and that's accentuated in the edit. And I think that that's really cool. I also really enjoy the sky and the shape, um, how the, the horizons down at the bottom and the trees on the left balance with the negative space on the right. This is a, a great image for the monochrome of the simplistic category. I think that this is like, it's beautiful and I'd love to hear more about the process here. Next image, please. <laughs> what a great play on using shadow to bring you in and balance with negative shape, like something so simple, but yet so graphic. And gosh, I love the richness of the black of the, I'm assuming it's coffee. It might be Coca-Cola, who knows? It might be Jack and Coke. I don't know, but I'm just going to call it coffee. <laughs> but the, the, the black and the coffee, I love the little light that comes on it. I love that black against the white of the cup. And I love that shadow and how the shadow points us back, but also honors that negative space. 
Um, so what a great, what a great entry and something simple that you can do at home, but also rock this category. A beautiful job. I love this person that's running towards the trees and I love the position of the legs. I was talking about position of legs in another image earlier, but here the position of the legs have such great shape. It's awesome. And the movement and the running towards the tree, like it brings us in and it balances. Um, here's one of the rules that are broken. Like you don't have those rich blacks, but it works in this image. It actually really works here. The softness makes you think of this foggy early morning and this person who is totally fine getting his exercise or her exercise in in the early morning. Uh, and I think that that's done really, really well. Um, I am a little distracted by the shapes on the left-hand side. Um, I wish that those weren't there. Like if I don't look at those, I find that my eye travels a little bit better instead of getting stuck there. Um, so I would have liked those to have been less obvious. Um, but other than that, I think this is a great image and I, I really love the feel of it. I really love the, I bet this would be beautiful, like printed and it's just got a great, I don't know, it's got a great feel to it. Next image, please. What a, oh gosh, I love when things are like, Oh, histograms are like super far on one side, but then they have like a little bit, like I love that this is so light and then it's got rich blacks, so like honors and, and the whites have tones in them. Like I can see tones throughout the whites. Like this is not clipped and it's edited so well. Like the black and white editing on this is just beautiful. I am a little bit of a stickler for a straight horizon line. Um, and this horizon line is just a little bit angled. Um, so I would have liked to have seen that cleaned up just a touch. Um, but great job with your black and white edit and great job with the minimalistic nature and the, you know, just the, the graphic quality and the treatment of the sky. Beautiful image. Next image, please. <laughs> oh my goodness. 630 is my dog's food time. It's like seven o'clock here. She's just looking at me crying. It's kind of funny. 10 minutes, buddy. I promise. <laughs> um, I love the edit here too. The black and white is gorgeous. Like um, the framing, the frame within a frame. I think it's really interesting too, that it's like a hardware shop, but it's actually like trees and nature behind it. <laughs> it's like, what's really going, what's going on here? Um, but I really love like how it's framed up and, and you know, how the treatment of that, that text is up top and um, you know, the tones in the background and I enjoy the depth of field. Um, and be careful, guys, when you're entering competitions, make sure you don't put your name on your images because that gets you uh, uh, a lot of competitions will disqualify you for things like that. So just be super careful about watermarks. Um, but I really do enjoy kind of the narrative and the framing and the black and white textural quality of this image. Next image, please. Sorry, Samantha, was that okay for me to point out? I'm like, is that? Oh, yeah. And I'm glad you did. I didn't look at them beforehand. So, okay, no yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, my goodness. This is so cool. Like the movement to this bird and like, I guess the hummingbird and like the black and the white and the edit and the, I mean, I can feel this bird moving and it, it's stunning. It's like, it's flying off the page on, on my image. Whoa, used a teleconverter on this. Really cool. You got a really sharp image of the teleconverter. That's amazing. 200 to 600, so cool. Um, but great, great job. Um, one thing, just be a little, little cleaner with your edit. I can see a tiny glow around the bird, but that's me being uber, uber picky. Um, but my goodness, what a great feel. What a striking image. Thank you so much. This image is just, oh my goodness, the the light and the seeing that spray and seeing that spray from, you know, like I guess the sun was at an angle where it was hitting just the very tip of the breaking wave um, and, and shooting that at like such a high shutter speed, one fifteen hundredth of a second um, to get all those like water droplets in the air, as well as like, this is, you know, this image has like a foreground element, a mid ground element and a background element with that, that boat in the background and even like little things like just worked out so well like the photographers frame this so well like that cloud like the cloud and how the cloud you know mimics the middle and the bottom of the frame and how it how it's got this great line it's like these lines throughout the whole landscape um 
yeah, this is beautiful. Great image to end on. <laughs> so what are we doing here? First, second, third, and honorable? That's right, one honorable. Okay. Oh, I stand by what I said before. Where's the, oh, it's three. Um, well, I know first is gonna be number 15 and second is number 14 for sure. Um, we're gonna do third as number two and honorable is number nine. <clears throat> okay. All righty. So honorable mention goes to Nikki. That is the Lake Michigan trees. Uh, just the title says, uh, it's taken in a Lake Michigan. Um, you are correct. This is totally done um, in post-processing the blur. Um, when I was taking the image, I just didn't even think to grab a tripod and ND filter and slow everything down. So I did it in post-processing and I painstakingly removed it off of those trees. But yeah. <laughs> And this is Soul Man by Julie. Oh, she says down at the bottom, musician playing in a bar. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Is Julie on? Is Julie on? She was in the chat. She says yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she must not be able to speak. OK. All right. Uh, Second place goes to Jeff, and that's called Hovering. Jeff Burke. Yeah, hi. This was uh, taken off of the deck um, while sitting down having a cocktail one afternoon in the summer. We set up uh, hummingbird feeders and uh, just sat back and photographed them, like you said, with the long lens and a 1.4 converter. And I accentuated on the bright bird and Managed to get the background fairly dark and just uh, did a little bit of touching up in the background. And a lot of the glow around. I love the glow in the wings and the movement of the wings. Beautiful. Okay. And number one goes to Charles, and this is called Sailing. Yeah, that was taken uh, off the coast of New Jersey. Um, it was shot uh, with 100 to 400. Uh, but it was only set to 135 millimeters, and, but it was on an APS-C camera, uh, 7D Mark II. So, but anyway, I shot the image and I, I flipped it. The boat was actually going the other way and I, I just wanted to flip it to make sure that all the spray comes up toward the boat. Very That's cool. It. <laughs> beautiful. Looks like a painting. Yeah, I love this one. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna bring up all the first places. <clears throat> okay. Whoops, too much. Let's go through <laughs> all the first places. Um, One at a time? Yeah. Okay. You just scroll through them every three seconds or so. Okay. This is hard. <laughs> this is really, really hard. Um, Oi. I hate this part. <laughs> um, I'd say best in show is number five. Me too, because I'm going to go to her house and steal it. <laughs> and <not> the ball. <laughs> Gretchen. Yay, Gretchen. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> so exciting. Excellent. 
Yeah, so well deserved, Gretchen. That's an awesome oh, it's image. So beautiful. It is. Amazing. I love the color. I actually agree. <laughs> well, thank you. you. Well, I hear the game <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and stop sharing and bring back the crazy screen <laughs> of people's faces. Well, guys, that was unbelievable. You guys are so talented. Stunning, stunning work. You made it really hard tonight. <laughs> well, thank you, Christy. Thank you. Yes, thank you for all those great comments and feedback. It's wonderful. <laughs> no worries. I was honored to do it. Thank you guys so much. And, and, and Samantha, will you post her website so we can get to that training thing she referenced? Oh, the yeah, the Nikon thing. I'll go ahead. I'll oh. post something separate about that, too. Thank you. That'd be great. Yep. That was a contribution. Yep. Nice to meet you guys too. Yep. Thank you again so much. Of Thank course. You. Thank you. Yeah, again, congrats to all the people that, that placed tonight. They were really, really good images. Because you're literally. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Thank you. Really Enjoy Thank Colorado. You. <laughs> you Virginia Thank will you. miss you. Oh, I'll be back. I can't not be back a lot because I love Virginia, yeah, but. <laughs> Cool. All right, everybody, have a great night. Thank you. Bye, Bye Sam. Bye. 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 Bye.